Hello and welcome to part 7 of our Serendipity Bookseller C++ project and in this part we will be creating some arrays. So it says for this chapter's assignment you are to add a series of arrays to the program. For the time being these arrays will be used to hold the data in the inventory database. The functions that allow the user to add, change and delete books in the store's inventory will be modified. Uh, will modify the data held in these arrays. Now, uh, these arrays will be up to 20, will be able to hold up to 20 books. This is really just to be able to kind of test them and see if they work. Uh, in chapter 12, we will be modifying the program to store this data in a file. And at that time, the program will be able to keep an inventory as large as the disk will hold. So, but for now we will limit it to 20 just for testing purposes. So this is the relationship between the arrays. Um, there will be a book title, ISBN author, publisher, date edit, quantity on hand, wholesale and retail. And um, this will be the arrays. The important thing to understand is that the subscripts of these arrays uh, will be parallel. In other words, the book title of subscript 0 will refer to the ISBN of subscript 0, which will have the author of subscript, subscript 0 and so forth. They will be parallel or kind of in sync, like uh, each subscript in each array will refer to the same book, same title, same ISBN. It will be like one record. All right, so. Uh, and here it is, it says that the data stored in the arrays will be linked through their subscripts. The string stored in book title 0 is the title of the book whose ISBN number is stored in ISBN 0. And likewise, the data stored in the author of 0, publisher 0, date edit 0 and so forth also belong to the same book. Now, currently, this is our book info function. It only displays this ISBN title offer, but it doesn't actually display any text. It just displays the headers or the headings. So we will modify the function so it has the following parameters. ISBN will be a string object. So we will basically the same with title, author, publisher. It's all string date. In this case, it's string as well. Quantity will be integer. Obviously, there's no point having decimal for quantity. You cannot have 2.2 .2 books. Wholesale, on the other hand, will be double because uh, it's a price or a cost, and the same with a with a retail. So the function will uh, book info function will display screen like that. If it say say the serendipity book information, and then it will be ISBN, and it will actually say what ISBN was entered title, and it will be the title of the book, author, and after that, author of the book. So um, we will not just have the headings, uh, but we will also have the actual corresponding data displayed. OK, so uh, let's create our arrays. We already have the headers imported to our uh, main menu. So uh, after the using namespace, we can create an array a constant uh, size. And it equals 20. Remember, for now, we only need uh, 20 as the size for the for the arrays. Now these are supposed to be global arrays, meaning that they are accessible from anywhere within the application from any file. Uh, so we will simply um, we will simply declare them right here above the main method of the main menu cpp file. So it's gonna be a string book title and it's gonna be size so this is the uh, array called book title with 20 elements in it because size is declared as constant for 20 and it's going to be the same for all the other arrays so ISBN they all will be the same size because again they have to be because they hold the same uh, number of books they, they or they uh, the record for uh, 
for these books have to match the elements in each array. So again, element zero across all these arrays refers to the same book. Uh, element, uh, let's say 15, refers to the 15th element uh, across all these arrays. They are corresponding. So string author size, that's another array, string publisher size, string, uh, uh, what is it, date, edit, size, and string, actually not string, in this case it's going to be the quantity, so quantity on hand, size, and we will have the double wholesale size and uh, the last one will be double oh, I forgot a semicolon here it will be double retail array with 20 elements so this is our or these are our arrays and since they are global, I'm declaring it in our or above our main method, so they're accessible from all the all the files in the application. So now let's go to our book info, mm, and we already have the header imported. So what we have to do, though, we are we have to pass the information for ISBN title, author, and so forth. We have to pass the uh, the arrays themselves, or the or the at least uh, the corresponding uh, corresponding books within the array. So in our function called void book info, we will pass some arguments. We will pass all of them. We will pass the ISBN. We will pass the title. We will pass the author. Uh, what was else there? The publisher was the next, right? String publisher. It's gonna be the string date, integer quantity. There was a double wholesale, wholesale and double retail. So these are the arguments that are being passed into this function. And now we can use them in our output over here. So when it says count serendipity booksellers, that's just a header, but for the ISBN, uh, what we can do now, we can use the past argument called ISBN to be displayed after the header ISBN. All right, so um, the same with the title, we'll pass the title And author, we will pass the author argument and publisher. Now we will have the uh, what was it? Date edit. So, but in this case, we just call it uh, date. So, date because, well, one thing. The array is called date edit. Over here, I'm passing date. That's because these are their own variables. We don't. Uh, these are not arrays. These are just variables. These are completely different. This is just the values being passed, and we can name them anything as long as they refer to the correct value that we want to pass. So uh, that's why they don't have to be named the same at all, because they are not the same uh, variables. So uh, for our quantity on hand, we pass in quantity. For our wholesale cost, we pass in uh, wholesale. And finally, for retail price, we are passing retail. And over here, I'll do end of line. 
and uh, let me see what I have the error. Okay. So we have the uh, the arguments passed. We have, but the, our function now changed, meaning we have to change our uh, header as well in our book info. Instead of just saying void book info, now we have to create a prototype that matches the signature of this uh, of this function. So we pass in string, 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 another string, integer, double, and double. So we will have to enter the arguments, or not the arguments, but the signature, which is string, 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 one more string, and then integer and double and double. And that will, uh, but also, you know, as you can see, it says std string includes string as a, a helper because we even in, we are in the header, but working with strings, we need to import the the library, so we have to include our string as well. And I don't want std string, just string. Okay. Uh, maybe I do need std. Oh, no, nah, no, what? Rather than doing it each like that. Let me just do also using namespace std. So that will take care of all of them. So we are we have to import the string library and also use the namespace std in order for the header to to work like that. Okay, so that eliminates our errors as well, and that really is all as far as uh, the arrays go. Now I don't have uh, this book info being actually called from any place within the program. So in order for me to test it, just temporarily, I'm going to call this function f when I press 1 in my main menu, instead of going to cashier module, it will call the book uh, info. And I will pass some parameters there. Uh, so it's asking for an ISBN as a string, so it's gonna be 1, 2, 3, could be the ISBN. Uh, another is the title, so it will be some title. Then there's the author, so it's gonna be some author. It's just to test it, all right? And uh, some publisher. So these are the arguments I'm, uh, that I'm passing into that function. So it's gonna be some uh, some date is the next. Then is the quantity, which is integer. So let's say ten books. Then there's the wholesale, let's say 25.95, because it's uh, asking for double, and retail will be 35.95. So I'm passing all these into my uh, book info. So when I run it now, and I press one, instead of going to cashier module, it should simply display all that information. So, uh, and you can see that it actually does. So. I entered one, and it says ISBN one two three title some title some author some publisher some date. Ten is the quantity twenty five ninety five wholesale and thirty five ninety five retail. So that actually is working. It's passing the, it's calling the function uh, correctly. It uh, the main menu already has the uh, book info header there, so I didn't have to add it anymore. Uh, so uh, let me just bring it back to what it was, because this is uh, basically just preparation for the next exercises with all the arrays and uh, this book info function and how it's being displayed. So cashier okay, is back. All right, so, but this is uh, how you create arrays. We'll have our size of 20 as requested. We created all our arrays, string, integer, and double, and we modified uh, our book info, we pass some arguments that match the information that is being displayed on the on the screen. And we had to modify the book info header, uh, the prototype in it uh, to match the signature uh, of the of the newly created function or the modified function. So I hope this was helpful. And 
I will see you in part 8. Take care.